We're now uh, in the men's locker room, joined with head coach Ryan Looney, and this is the Ryan Looney Show number one. Hope uh, you're ready for Mounties All Access. Oh yeah. Now, coach, uh, briefly, kind of recap on a uh, big night on Saturday. Well, it was pretty emotional. Obviously, it was a uh, senior night, so four of our guys got to play their last regular season home game in Clint Coliseum, um, but definitely not their last. Uh, hopefully, we can keep it alive here in the conference tournament so they can play as many as possible here in LeGram. Um, but uh, the game was pretty exciting, too. There was a lot on the line, um, an outright conference title, um, an automatic trip uh, to the national tournament. Um, and uh, we set a school record for most wins in a season, too, with 24. So, all in all, uh, it was probably as big a night of basketball as maybe there's ever been. Now, uh, I don't think a lot of people might know, but it wasn't too long ago the Mounties only had four wins. Yeah, and uh, we've talked about that a lot uh, with our team. Uh, our first year here, um, it was a little bit of a battle. Uh, we had to work hard to uh, kind of uh, build our program for lack of a better term. Um, and uh, I couldn't be happier for the bunch of people or guys that we have on our team right now because they made a decision to come to school here um, because they trusted our coaching staff uh, at a time when we weren't all that successful and uh, we've gotten to the point where right now uh, we won our school's first Cascade Collegiate Conference Championship. Now I talked a little bit with uh, Coach Weisenthal and uh, asked her what her favorite postseason memory. Uh, you don't have that many, so talk about uh, what that means for you this year. It it means a ton. I mean, this is uh, probably as big a thing as we could accomplish in this uh, point of our season. Um, so to win our first conference championship and my first conference championship as a head coach, it's pretty exciting. Now you have the final rankings coming out. Uh, on Wednesday, and this is a little different situation than when you were at last year. Yeah, it's a lot different situation. Um, last year, uh, we were in the poll um, the whole entire season, and then unfortunately dropped out right before uh, uh, the conference tournament started. Um, and the, we thought the only way we were going to be able to get into the national tournament was to win the tournament championship. Um, and we got close, uh, played in the championship game at Warner Pacific, and. They got us in the second half of that game, and we've kind of used that as a little bit of motivation going into this tournament. And right now, we're on the flip side. Um, we we're fortunate enough to be on the top of our conference standings when the season got over, um, which earned us an automatic berth to the national tournament. Uh, the last poll comes out uh, on Wednesday. Um, I'm not even going to venture to say where we might be ranked. Um, but we need to use these conference tournament games as uh, motivation to try to get ourselves the highest seed possible in Branson. I was going to ask, uh, dare I say, a top five ranking for you? you. I hope so. And for our guys, I think they deserve it. Um, some things happened around the country over the weekend that uh, would maybe make that possible. But at the same time, crazy things have happened. And I mean, who knows where it might be. Uh, it's hard to not look ahead to the uh, national tournament uh, now that you've made it. Um, if you're in the top five, it, it works a little differently in the NEI. The final poll is used for the seeding process. Uh, obviously, we saw last year that uh, we were just out of the uh, qualifications for that large bid. The differences between the NCAA and the NEI, talk a little bit about those. Well, uh, obviously, the NCAA tournament's bigger. There's 64 teams, there's only 32 in ours. Um, to me, at the NCAA level, the people who rate, they get a chance to see all the teams on TV um, nationwide. They can compare uh, one versus the other a little bit more closely than maybe we can at the NAI level. We don't get a chance to see uh, teams on the East Coast or the Midwest play, and vice versa, they don't get to see us play um, either. So I think it's a little bit harder for uh, teams to, or Raiders to be able to become 100% accurate in the bowl, which makes probably the national tournament that much more interesting. I've got a nice little uh, log in the background here, but yep. uh, we'll get through this. Look at me at the uh, Cascade Conference Tournament, hosting here in the Grand. got to be amazing at Quinn Coliseum. And uh, Coach Wiseman shared some of her reasons why Quinn Coliseum is such a tough place to play. And she mentioned the student body. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I think our student crowd, uh, for the most part, has been great um, this year. They're uh, 
they're loud, um, they're more than uh, supportive um, to our athletes uh, on the floor. Um, but I think it's hard for teams to play in Quinn for a lot of different reasons. Number one, we're isolated in Eastern Oregon a little bit. Um, it's not a short trip for anybody uh, to come here. Um, I don't know that teams necessarily have all that much to do while they're in town before they uh, play the game, um, which, can, which those days can get kind of long on the road sometimes. Um, but at the same time, I, I mean, our teams are good right now. Uh, it's never easy to go into a hostile environment with a large number of people um, and be successful. Right? Um, before looking at uh, the whole conference as a, as a, as a whole, um, we got to mention who we're going to play first in the first round. You got Northwest Christian. It's got to be nice playing the team you just played. Yeah, it is nice, but at the same time, it's hard to beat somebody three times in one season. Um, and just as nice as it is for us, it's just as nice for them, too. Uh, scouting will become a pretty important part of the game. Um, we're going to work hard these next two days to be the team that's most prepared. Uh, but I think our approach to the game is going to have to be a little bit different than it was just a couple of days ago because we rode on emotion for 20 straight minutes in that thing. Um, and it took us a long way, and that wasn't necess necessarily the case the first time we played them at their place. So we're going to have to approach the game a little bit differently. Um, we're going to need to make sure that we're prepared, X's and O's wise, um, and just make sure we're ready to go. You think it's about that time of year where upsets start to happen, and it's getting close to March and the madness. You don't have to look too far back, especially in the Cascade Conference. Last year, the number one team, Oregon Tech, hosted uh, Evergreen State, who was the eighth seed, and Evergreen State went down to Pendle Falls and beat them. Yeah, the special thing about the Cascade Conference is traditionally there's been a lot of parity. Um, the eighth team, in all honesty, isn't that much uh, different than the number one team. So, yeah, I don't know that we can necessarily look at it like it's one playing eight. It's more like one of the better teams in our league playing against a team that's capable of beating anybody on any night. Now, if we uh, take a look at the conference, and you would say who's the, the hottest team at the moment, you know, you have to factor in, of course, Eastern Oregon. But uh, you also got Oregon Tech right there on your heels. Uh, the top four teams: Warner Pack, Evergreen State, and uh, you got Concordia playing pretty good ball right now. Yeah, all all of those teams. Um, I would even throw in uh, Northwest. They're probably all capable of winning this conference tournament. Uh, like I just previously stated, there's a lot of parity. Um, anyone's beaten anyone at different points in the season. Uh, and like you just said, I think Concordia is one of the teams that's hot right now. And uh, we'll end on a, a good question here. Now, I don't know how much television you watch. Uh, I asked Coach Weisenflu, uh, you got the writer's strike going on right now. What shows do you listen to most? Uh, I don't really watch any TV this time of year. I wish I knew what you were talking about, but I don't. Well, fair enough. Coach Looney, uh, thank you for joining us, and uh, we're going to join with you next week for our uh, second show with you, and uh, hope we'll be talking about a conference tournament championship. Hopefully. All right, thanks. thanks. All right. Yeah, a little more. Yeah, it was maybe better open it up, up that, open up that door and cuss him out. Does anyone know what's going on right now?